Calaroga Shark Media. Do me a favor. If this is the first time you're hearing this podcast, listen to any other episode. Hi, I'm Johnny Mack with your daily comedy news. And uh, this one's for me. Sometimes I just need to talk to the audience. Uh, you can hear it in my voice. Uh, so I went to see the Stones Thursday night, right? And... Again, if this is your first time with the show, this is totally self-indulgent. Go find a different episode. Uh, so I headed out to the Stones and parked the car, and I was sitting there with my buddy Glenn, and we had gotten Chipotle, and we're eating our burritos, and, you know, nice enough night. And I take a selfie of us, uh, go to send it to my wife, World's at Tamus Tailgate, and I see two missed calls, a voicemail, and a text that says, call me. Now, that's never good, right? And nope, it was not good. Uh, just took another stomach punch, some uh, just more terrible news. But, you know, we were at the show, and there was nothing to be done, and I don't have a time machine, so Glenn and I saw the Rolling Stones. Uh, I'll have it in my sub stack on Monday. That's my free newsletter where I talk about the media. Um, so if you want to get a full review of the show, that'll be in the sub stack. You can hear I can't even form a sentence today. I think... They were really good. It was one of those things where I was not good company. Glenn understood, but I'm sitting there and I'm half thinking about the phone call from my wife and I'm half enjoying the stones and I'm like, you know, kind of out of it. And then like, oh, wow, this sounds really good. I really like the song Miss You, but what this conversation would be when I get home. So that's where I am today. But uh, I just want to tell you the stones, I think they were pretty good, but I'm not sure because I was out of it. Uh, the other thing affecting me today is Morgan Spurlock passed away. Now I worked with Morgan and uh, I'm trying to explain the Morgan Spurlock I worked with uh, circa, I don't know, 2015, 16, 17, somewhere in that range. Yeah, somewhere in that range uh, was like a really cool, thoughtful guy. He passed away on Thursday in upstate New York. Complications from cancer. He was 53. I'm 54. We did a podcast with him. Uh, it was a weekly news recap show, a really good idea. I think maybe we tried it a little too early in podcasting's growth curve. Um, it was a show that deserved a lot better. I don't even know if it's still up. Let me look. Yeah, I don't see it. My old company may possibly have taken it down. Let me read from his obituary in Variety. This is where it gets a little complicated. In December 2017, as the Me Too movement continued to gain traction, Spurlock wrote in a lengthy social media post saying he was part of the problem. In the post, he admitted to serial infidelities and said he had settled an allegation of sexual harassment from a former assistant. He also said he had been accused of rape in college. The post effectively ended as Spurlock's documentary career as Spurlock stepped down from Warrior Poets shortly after. If I remember correctly, he stepped down at the Christmas party that year. Yeah, December 2017. I had a lengthy lunch with him on the other side of that. Um, I don't know what happened or didn't happen. I can tell you he was quite remorseful about everything, and I found him to be a very thoughtful person. Uh, again, I don't know what happened, and uh, if something horrible happened, I'm not here to defend it. I'm just telling you, at lunch, the guy I worked with found him to be cool, found him to be thoughtful, but he canceled himself for a reason, so I don't know. So all that's kind of on my mind today. Also, out of that podcast that I worked with Morgan on, that's how I know uh, Tim Dillon. He was one of the frequent collaborators on the show. And, you know, at that time, I'm like, I don't know who this guy is. And he would crush every time he came on. Uh, so, you know, I often think of Morgan when I think of Tim. And just when I heard this news on Friday, I was just absolutely stunned. All right. Let me see if I can find my fastball here. Um, I also personally, I, I need a couple of days off. <laughs> it's been quite a stretch. I'm hoping to take Memorial Day weekend and just sit on the deck and listen to music and play video games and I'm gonna watch Dune and stuff. I just need to turn my brain off for a couple of days. So my goal here uh, is to immediately find my fastball and then record a bunch of these and give myself a couple of days off. So thank you for that self-indulgence here in the first five minutes. Um, again, if this is your first time listening, that's not normally what you get here, right? Let me see if I can find my, you know, upbeat delivery because our top story today. All right, let me find it in three, two, one. Dave Chappelle in the news, he was performing at Abu Dhabi Comedy Week. And as part of his set, he said a genocide is striking the Gaza Strip. All right, so that's going to make huge news as I record Friday around lunchtime. This story just starting to bubble up. Chappelle's comments get complicated. Abu Dhabi has maintained its diplomatic relations with Israel, although it has increasingly criticized Israel's conduct in the seven-month war. Meanwhile, pro-Palestinian marches have swept across the Middle East since the war began. Before Dave came on stage, DJ Trauma played the song My Blood is Palestinian by Palestinian singer Mohammed Asaf. No, no footage of this show yet, as it was one of those Yonder Pouch shows. Keep an eye on that one. 
All right, I need a laugh. Uh, I'm going totally out of sequence here. Did you see what happened on Wheel of Fortune? Here, listen to this. Let's do it. Our first toss-up is worth $1,000. Category is phrase, and off we go. Tavares, right in the butt. Yeah, that's that's it, I think. Yeah. Much better answer. Late night with a couple of random jokes. Jimmy Fallon pointing out that it's Fleet Week in New York City. If you're in Manhattan this weekend, you'll see a lot of sailors. Um, usually sailors are in shape and look good in a uniform. I'm a straight male, but I understand why, you know, some people would be like, hey, check that out. Fallon said, of course, Fleet Week kicked off here in New York City with the parade of ships, and it ends Tuesday when all the bartenders wave a white flag. Fallon, again, he talked about there's a new airline, Bark Air, it's for dogs. I talked about this on the other podcast. I host five good news stories. Uh, the short version is Dog Airline. Okay, you get the setup there. Fallon said the flights take a little longer because the plane has to do three circles before it lands. New topic, Colbert talking about a Trump aide task with printing out copies of flattering articles for Trump. Colbert said when she really needs his attention, she prints those on a slice of bologna. <laughs> nice silly joke. Another silly joke from Colbert. Unified Reich is the most fascist presidential ad since Dwight Eisenhower's I Like Reich. Just a silly joke joke. I love joke jokes. Uh, the New York Times has an article on what comedy specials you should watch this weekend, and I figure I better do this one today, right? This is by Jason Zinneman. I respect his work a lot. He recommends Nikki Glazer's Someday You'll Die. I didn't feel it at all. Uh, I, I understand that's an unpopular opinion, but didn't feel it at all. Nathan McIntosh on his list, Down With Tech. Um, not familiar with this one. Let's see. Down With Tech, self-produced, focuses Nathan's populist fury on the tech oligarchs with how much our attention we've conceded to their whims. All right, I'll try and file that in the back of my mind. I don't know if, how much comedy I'm in the mood for this weekend. I really think I need to watch like Dune and just turn my brain off totally. Because Part of it is if I start watching a comedy special, I start mentally hosting the show again. And like I said, I just need to, <laughs> I need a little break. I need a little break. Uh, Rachel Feinstein's Big Guy, I forgot that even came out here in this busy week. That's on Netflix. I want to check that out. Neil Brennan's Crazy Good. Solid recommendation there. Oh, he's another one off the beaten path. Ian Abramson's The Heist. This one on YouTube, Jason writes, if you're a comedy fan with an experimental bend, give this giddily oddball performer a shot. He begins with a cinematic heist scene and ends with a wild lark of a closure that no one will see coming. Sounds fun. All right, let me take the break here. Uh, this was all new. I, I threw out the first half of what was originally Saturday. I'll chop into pieces and I'll use it over the course of the weekend. Uh, the second half, you'll hear my normal delivery because I recorded a couple days ago. Now, if you were listening last Sunday, you heard me say that, oh, I have a ton of leftovers. Maybe I will record Memorial Day weekend. That's this part here. The Columbus Underground caught up with Bill Burr. And they said a few years ago, Rolling Stone had you as 17th on their list of best stand-up comedians of all time. You're in the same tier as Bill Hicks, Robin Williams, and Andy Kaufman. Thoughts? Burr said, you know, it's funny. It bugged me when I was left off it early on. Or if there was someone I thought wasn't as good, just mention I wasn't. And then I just kind of realized somewhere along the line, did I get this business to be on a list? So much of it was also if you had a hot career at the moment or if you didn't or who you knew, all that stuff. Just like the award show, the effort, the promotion, the schmoozing, all the stuff you have to do just to get friggin' nominated. I mean, it's Washington, D.C. It's the same thing. Like, you're running for office. I don't pay too much attention to it. You know, it's like looking at a list of top drummers and musicians, something I don't do so I can have fun debates of like, dude, how can you put this drummer ahead of that drummer? I don't want to look at a list of something I'm doing because there always only somebody off it I feel strongly about. Or the worst is, it was just kind of a lazy list of who's selling the most tickets and stuff. To be honest with you, that's how I made it on those lists. It certainly wasn't because of my looks. Eventually, you start selling tickets. Someone goes, well, this guy's selling tickets. He'll bring eyeballs or he'll sell magazines. By the way, this is not meant to be a Bill Burr impression. It's more of a vibe. Once you finally make it on a list... Then you got to wonder how much of what's on there is truth or fact. Because, you know, I played Madison Square Garden. If I did the exact same thing, but only did it at Funny Bone Clubs, why don't I even make the list? And if I do, where am I on the list? I mean, it's nice to be mentioned, but it's not something I hang my hat on or really start believing like, wow, I guess I'm 11th of all time or whatever the hell they have. That's hilarious. If you look at the people who are actually the reason the art form exists, there's about 30 people right there. I feel like you have the tale of like an Eddie Murphy or something like that. Maybe. I don't know. But you look, I think wherever I am on those lists, because it's 2024 and I'm selling these tickets right now. Let's say 20 years from now when I'm a senior citizen, nobody gives a hoot about me. If I'm still making a list, then I'd be like, yeah, that's pretty good. That's all right. <laughs> let's see. Since it is a holiday weekend, let's see if the list is around. 
By the way, um, someday I'm going to get the flu or something. I have had for two, three years, there's a couple safety episodes sitting on the back end in case I just can't speak or I've deep dove into these lists. They're going to be pretty moldy by the time it actually runs. All right. I think this is the list, and I'm not sure when they made the list, but uh, the list is something like this. Number one, Richard Pryor. Two, Carlin. Three, Lenny Bruce. Four, Woody Allen. Five, Chris Rock. Steve Martin. Rodney. Cosby. Roseanne at nine. Come on, stop. Eddie Murphy, who, um, again, I'm from the 80s. Love Eddie. But the more I pay attention, it's just a Richard Pryor cover band, top to bottom. Now, if you're my age, we loved him. But it's a Richard Pryor cover album. So I, I don't know. I, I got to move Eddie way down the list these days. Uh, Carson, Seinfeld, Robin Williams, Bob Newhart, Letterman, Ellen, Rickles, Jonathan Winters, Hicks, Kinnison, Dennis Miller, Klein, Stephen Wright, Red Fox, Bob Hope at 25, Romano, Leno, Jack Benny, Milton Berle, Gary Shanling. I'm just trying to get to Bill Burr, but maybe this list might be from like 2004. Um, George Burns, Albert Brooks, Andy Kaufman, Buddy Hackett, Phyllis Diller, Jim Carrey, Martin Lawrence, Bill Maher, Billy Crystal, Mort Saul. John Stewart, Flip Wilson. I mean, John Stewart's great, but best stand-ups of all time, John Stewart, number 41. And number 43 is Dave Chappelle. Now, clearly, if you made that list today, there's no way that <laughs> that's the rankings, right? No way. And number 46 is Adam Sandler. So, obviously, the list is complete garbage. Sebastian Maniscalco was talking about AI in comedy. He said, I don't know how it's going to affect stand-up comedy. Guess I really haven't seen that yet. I haven't really been on the pulse of things going, oh, wow. I mean, my wife used it to redesign our kitchen, what our kitchen might look like if we remodeled it, which is cool to see. He said he thinks live entertainment will always be around, but who knows, 20 years from now, I might be talking to you and you might be going, wow, you never saw AI coming. And I'd be like, yeah, now I'm unemployed. Look, you're always going to want to see the actual performer. It, again, uh, I went to see the Rolling Stones a few days ago. And I have Rolling Stones DVDs. It's not the same. You want to be there. You'd be part of it. Can an AI write some stuff? Sure, it can write some stuff. Can an AI voice some stuff? I use AI to revoice a couple of my stumbles three, four times a week, including this phrase right here. Uh, if I said, uh, welcome to the month of July, and I meant to say June, I can replace the July with June. And you won't notice, and I won't notice, and I'm me. But if I start to use a lot of AI, it, it falls apart. But... That's as bad as the AI is ever going to get. So it should be pretty interesting as we head forward. And that is your comedy news for today. Enjoy the holiday weekend. I'll have episodes for you all through the weekend and meet you back here tomorrow.